Welcome to the EVDA scheduling tutorial. First, we will look at how to log in. Once you've been added as a user, you will receive an SMS with a URL to the portal as well as your first time password. You can log in using your mobile number and your password. If you lost your password, you can go to recover password. We're going to sign in. Next, we will look at setting up your template. As you've logged in, you will see that you are assigned to the scheduling administrator and you have the option to select scheduling module. You then select the program you would like to look at as well as the specific facility. Now you'll see that the, currently there is no information in this table because the template has not been populated yet. I'm going to click on the schedule button top right and then you will see that I have the option to set up schedule template. It shows the facility name and I click edit and now I have to populate the scheduling start date, the scheduling end date and the scheduling percentage. The scheduling percentage indicates what percentage of the total vaccination capacity of a site should be scheduled. So I'm going to use 80 in this example. You now see the template for this facility. It shows the days of the week and it shows that currently the total scheduled capacity per day is zero. If we go into a specific day, you can see all the slots for that day. So if we look at this slot, 8 to 10, and we want to edit the total capacity, we will click on edit. And there you'll see that you have the ability to fill in the capacity. At the bottom of the screen, there is a question, would you like to apply capacity to all days for this time? If you tick that box, the capacity specified here, 100, will be allocated to all 8 to 10 slots um, for Monday through to Friday. So now you'll see that the capacity is 100 for the 8 to 10 slot and the total scheduled capacity will be 80 because we set the scheduling percentage to 80%. You can then continue to specify the capacity for every slot in that day. Now that we have specified which of the slots will be active for Monday, and what the capacity for each of these slots are, we can click on the Show All Scheduled Days button to look at the rest of the days of the week. So you'll see currently for Monday, uh, we have a um, total capacity of 220, and then you can continue to do the same for Tuesday through to Sunday. Now I have completed the template for every day of the week and you will see that this site is not open for vaccinations on a Saturday and a Sunday. The last step in the template process is to click the approve button in the bottom left corner. The pop-up will ask you to confirm that you are approving the schedule. You can click OK to continue. And then you will see the top right, there is a message that says schedule has been created. And now you can see the different slots, the max allocation within each slot. And then currently the current allocation is zero. But the moment uh, beneficiaries receive codes, they will be allocated to these slots. Next, we will look at reviewing your live schedule. So if I go to a different site for which scheduling was already previously activated and I click on the schedule button top right, you will see the active scheduling for this facility and the different slots with the start and end date are all listed, the program, and then for each slot it shows the current allocation as well as the maximum allocation. The has capacity column 
specifies whether more people could be allocated to this slot. So in the first example, zero out of 32 people have been scheduled and therefore this slot has capacity for more people to be allocated. And in the second slot, you will see that 32 out of a maximum of 32 have been allocated and therefore has capacity is false. You can use the drop down and paging at the bottom of the table to flip through the different slots. Next we will look at how to pause and unpause a scheduling slot. It is important to note that pausing a slot stops new people from being allocated to that slot but it does not reallocate people that have already been scheduled. If we look at the example where six people out of a total of 19 have been scheduled, if we want to make sure that no further people are scheduled to that slot, we can pause it. We do this by clicking on the pause button. You will see that you get a pop-up that says schedule has been paused and the active field in that slot turns to false. This means that the six people already scheduled will remain scheduled, but no further people will be scheduled to that slot. You can click the view button to see the detail of a specific slot. Here you can see the people who have been scheduled as well as their mobile numbers to facilitate call-ups where required. You can also send the people in a slot an SMS to invite them earlier if capacity is available or to delay them if you are running behind schedule. If you would like to unpause a slot, you can just click on the pause button again. So currently you'll see that the, the active status is false. If we would like to schedule more than six people for this slot, we will click on pause again, and you'll see that the active status has turned to true. Lastly, we will look at how to review your program cask. After selecting the facility, you will see the program status table of that facility that shows you the program name, the facility name. It shows you the total number of people that have registered linked to that facility. Um, here you'll see that out of the 93 registered, 93 have received their code. And 40 have redeemed their vaccine codes or been vaccinated and 53 have not yet been vaccinated and 53 are currently scheduled for their first dose. And that concludes this EVDS scheduling tutorial.